the point that's point five percent or something? Yeah, right. Was it saying five percent? Five percent. Okay. Here's another question. If I had two hundred and seventy eight students, how many of them would be male? If the same ratio was true. Well, it's a conversion, isn't it? 278 students and whoop, I'm going to use that percentage that says that five males for every 100 students. This is my percentage, right? This came from right here. <coughs> for every 100 students. Okay? That's what percentages tell you. Parts out of 100. So how many males would I have in 578? 15 males? What was it, like 14 point something? 15.29. 15.29. Can't have 0.29 people, right? So 15 males out of 278 students, if that percentage held true throughout, okay? So in the homework, you'll probably see a problem or two with percentages in it. Parts out of 100 is what you need to think, okay? If you're gonna use it as a conversion, all right? You ever see percentages listed like this any other way, place? In a grocery store? Nutrition levels, but Simpler than that, anybody ever buy milk? 2% milk, what does it mean? 2% facts. It's done on a mass basis, right? So like two grams out of every 100 grams is fat. Or one gram out of every 100 grams is fat. Skim is what, less than half a percent? And I learned a fact early in my earlier class. Whole milk is not all the same. Well, it is in a store. But if you go to a farmer and buy whole milk, it can have different amounts of fat in it from, based upon the cow that it came from. The, the different breeds of cows have different amounts of fat. I didn't know that. I'm not a dairy farmer. I don't even really like milk that much. It's in my cereal. Then you gotta have whole milk. Cheesecake too. Mm -hmm. What bake? What can I say? Yeah, cream. cream cheese most of it comes from whole milk. <laughs> oh, I'm not for ice cream. Sorry. I don't make ice cream. I just go buy ice cream. I have made it before. I made a cheesecake at Christmas. It had a brownie layer at the bottom and then a cheesecake layer on top. Oh my god, that was good. I got one piece. My brother dropped it on the floor. I'm going to beat that snot out of me. All right. So that's for conversions today. We got one special kind of conversion that we want to do. Yeah, we did all these Come on. Oh, we didn't do one of these. What about minutes and seconds? You can do them with time as well, right? You guys could if you guys could do those other ones, you could knock this one out like two minutes. It is right. It's an hour since we little bottom, and it's good thing we'll probably be never an hour since it. Seconds. Go all the way to seconds. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was in seconds. What does it do? It just adds one more step, doesn't it? There you go. Go all the way to seconds. Make a little bit more sense. 
Pickles and ice cream or something? Uh -huh. Holy moly. 24 hours in a day. I was like, is this just from eight to eight? <laughs> no, no. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you coloring your hair to cover up the bonds? Is that yeah. what's going on over here? Sorry, Mac. convert days into? Oh, hours. One day equals 24 hours. Now we have hours. Cancel out days, right? 24 hours. What do we have? One hour, 60 minutes. Two sick things. Is that right? Mm -hmm. See, a lot of you saw this one, you're like, you could do this because you're so familiar with these types of units here, but you're not familiar with the other problems that I've asked you meters and centimeters and all that kind of stuff. Gotta go home and practice, okay? Fair enough? Because you can watch me do a million examples and you're not gonna get better until you practice. All right. Now, last part of class today, we're gonna talk about density. Anybody ever witness density at play? What are we talking about with density? When did you see density work? density working in your cup here? What's it doing? What's happening in your cup here that I can talk about density? What about the ice? What does it do? What demonstrate density in your cup? The ice. What does the ice do? How does it have to do with density? When you put ice in water, what does it do? It does melt. It floats. It floats, doesn't it? Why does it float? Because it's less dense than the water. Now, ice is a little unique. Mostly solids are more dense than liquids, and liquids are more dense than gases, right? Okay. So we've all seen density at play. So. Here are some examples of density. Density has two units, grams per milliliter or grams per centimeters cubed. If you look on here, you see solids are very dense, liquids not so much, gases not at all. How could you figure out that gases aren't very dense if you didn't know if you didn't have these numbers? Has anybody ever moved through some gas before? I'm moving through gas right now. This room is full of gas. Nitrogen and oxygen, okay? And it doesn't take a lot of effort to move through the air, does it? Anybody ever moved through a liquid before? Yes? What liquid did you move through? Water. Water. Why would you do that? Because you went swimming. It takes a little bit of effort to swim though, doesn't it? Way more effort to swim than it does to walk around. Why? Because the water is more dense. It takes a lot of effort to move through it. All right? Anybody ever moved through a solid before?
Bruce Lee could. <laughs> right? David, oh, we are really old school. David Carradine. Do I, you know who that is, don't you? Yeah, he did. He is dead. So is Bruce Lee. Who are modern martial arts guys? Steven Seagal. So he's not even Jack modern. Jackie Chan. Uh, Jackie Chan, yeah. Okay. I do know who that is, by the way. Steven Seagal's not. I mean, he's getting all up there, though, man. <laughs> he's gotten pretty dense and stuff. Yeah, he's... He's hurting. It takes a lot of effort to move through solids, doesn't it? Okay. Why? Because solids are very dense. Particles are very closely packed together. Okay? Now, here's what density is. It is mass over volume. In the lab, we're going to do ex these experiments. And we'll show you. You have to be able to measure the mass and you have to be able to measure the volume somehow. Now, a couple weeks ago, we measured volume by adding a rock to a graduated cylinder. Who remembers doing that lab? So what happened? You add the rock to the graduated cylinder, what happens? The water level goes up and you subtract the two water levels and that gives you the volume of the solid, right? So that's one way you can do it. You could also measure it, right? If it's a nice uniform shape, you can measure it and calculate the volume. We don't like calculating, do we? Difference is way easier than length, width, height, or power, square, h, or something like that, right? So two units, grams per centimeter cubed, normally for solids, or grams per milliliter for liquids. Here's an example. They had this piece of metal. They submerged it. The volume went from 35.5 milliliters to 45, so the volume is 9.5 milliliters. The mass, 68.60 grams, measured on a balance. You take the two and you divide, you're down to 7.2 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, make sense? You just divide the two units, grams over centimeters cubed or grams over milliliters. Here's another example. Let's talk our way through this one. Do we know the mass? 48 grams, it tells us. 48.0. Do we know the volume? 